can't you what tell me where? What kind of a hotel are you running oh, anyway? Well, is there a message oh, left there for Mr. Honeywell and Mr. Albright? This is an emergency. Thanks. Any luck? No, sir. If you ever had one thought in that pointed head of yours, you never would have told Margie that Doris Barron was in town. I didn't tell her. She called Margie. Honest. After all, they're the same age and have things in common. Except that fat trust fund that Miss Barron comes into next month on her 21st birthday. You call that common? She had one of the richest fathers in the country, and Margie's going to have the poorest if she causes us to lose this account. Now, see here, Margie doesn't get into trouble with our clients every time. Name one for the giant jackpot and the trip to Honolulu. Well, I'll, I'll call you pop and maybe they'll come back there. If they haven't, save yourself another call and cancel your lease. You'll be sleeping in the park. In one hour, Miss Barron is due to leave for that health farm in Connecticut. Margie, that's a simply marvelous idea. You know, I think you're even smarter than your father. Well, that's a point we're still threshing out. But the idea ought to work. We go to the health farm. I take your name, you take mine, and you're free to get into all sorts of trouble while I play the part of a poor little rich girl. You'll be me and I'll be you. It's perfect. You know, it seems a shame to waste such genius on a mere man. <laughs> but I've simply got to find out if Jeff is fascinated by my fatal charm or by my trust fund. Doris, you're positive he doesn't know who you are? Oh, absolutely. When he cut in on me that night at the dance, I wouldn't even tell him my name. You know, the um, mysterious woman approach. Deadly. Never misses, even without a veil. So, of course, he had to spend the rest of the evening talking about himself and loving it dearly. That's par for the sex. But when I found out that he was a physical instructor at Madame Delange's health farm, I was even more cagey. You know, that place is stocked with nothing but nothing except rich women. So, he could be a fortune hunter type fellow. But you're hoping he's just Jeff Harris, boy doll. We'll soon find out, Miss Barron. Uh, there's just one fly in the ointment, a papa fly. Oh, you're not going to tell your father about our changing name? Oh, of course not. I don't even want to tell him I'm going with you to the farm. Why not? Well, Dad and Mr. Honeywell find it hard to keep it gay when they know I'm on the loose with one of their clients. Well, next month I'll be 21. And, of course, then I have to decide what firm is going to handle my business affairs. So, um, I think I can convince Mr. Honeywell. Shall we stroll toward the office while we think of another word for blackmail? <laughs> Hello, St. Regis. Will you ring Doris Barron's suite again, please? And if she's not there, have her paged. And if she doesn't answer the page, drag the river from my body. Hello, Dad. Margie Albright, where have you been? And where's Doris Barron? Oh, she's around. Well, you get her over here immediately, understand? And I'll deal with you when you get here. Okay, Dad, it's your deal. Margie Albright, where have you been? And where's Miss Barron? You just said that. Now, now, Dad, don't get excited. Don't get excited? With you probably messing up one of our biggest accounts, do you realize that Doris Barron comes into complete control next month? I know. She told me. She told you? Then you were talking business with her. Well, not exactly. That is... Well, this does it. I've told you for the last time not to meddle in my affairs. And this time, by Harry, I'm going to do something about it. Now, now, all right, simmer down. <laughs> Hello, Margie, my dear. Hi, Mr. Honeywell. What's the idea of scolding our little girl? Mr. Honeywell, you must need glasses. That's Margie. Of course it is. I'm very fond of her. Did you have a jolly afternoon with Miss Barron? Oh, yes, indeedy. Real jolly. <laughs> I must be going crazy. Well, perhaps an occasional chat with a psychiatrist wouldn't be wasted all my <laughs> That can wait. Margie's leaving for the health farm with Miss Barron. That is, if it won't inconvenience you too much, my dear. Oh, not at all. I'd be delighted. I don't understand it. I just don't understand it. I hope you won't mind sharing the room with your secretary. Not at all. No bless oblige, you know. You're a very fortunate girl to have such a gracious employer, Miss Albright. Oh, I appreciate what she's doing for me. Oh, yes. Come in, Jeffrey. Miss Barron, this is Mr. Harris, our physical instructor. He will give you your schedules and answer any questions you may have about our routine. Now, please call me if there's anything you wish. Au revoir. It's you. Surprise. 
I'll say I am. I had no idea you were... Hey, by the way, uh, which one are you? Oh, uh, I'm Margie Albright. And this is my boss, Doris Barron. How do you do? So this is your young man, Margie. I must say he's a handsome specimen. A bit earthy, but handsome. <laughs> Hello, Jeff. I may be horribly rich, but I'm not horrible. After all, I let Margie drag me up here just so she could see you. Gee, Margie, I'm sure glad you're the one you turned out to be. I mean, uh, well, you seem like a regular guy, Miss Barron, so I'll be honest with you. I'm just about up to here with rich, pampered society women. I have to make my living by pampering, but I don't have to like them. You never know what a relief it is to find someone like you, used to the plain, simple things of life. <coughs> I think I got to the health farm just in time. Uh, what is my schedule? Oh, yeah. You want to get the full treatment, Miss Barron? You'd like a copy so you can keep track of her? Aren't you taking the treatments, too? Oh, uh, no, I just signed up for you. I'm going to devote my time to your social correspondence. Oh, you mean the mail. It's spelled your way. <laughs> All right, Margie, have fun. Oh, I'm looking forward to taking it easy here at the farm. Long, lazy days in the sun. Just peachy keen. Next time around, try one, two, three, collapse. That I can do. You can the kids for a bit. I'll be back in a few minutes. One, two, three, bend. One, two, three, twist. One, two, three, bend. One. One, two, three, drop dead. sent your dinner up special service. Well, what about you? Oh, I've already had dinner, and it was delicious. Rare roast beef, baked potato with chives, asparagus, hollandaise. <laughs> Stop torturing me. I'm starving. <laughs> well, let me at it. <laughs> You're the one who's supposed to live on love. Me? I need meat. Margie, honey, I'm sorry. Honestly, I didn't know. Can't you speed this romance up? The old girl just can't take many more days like this one. I don't think it's going to be much longer. Jeff's taking me dancing tonight. Oh, listen, do you mind if we use your car? Jeff doesn't have one. Oh, sure, honey. Just one small favor do I ask in return. Bring me back a hamburger, will you, huh? With cheese, huh? Onions, too, huh? <laughs> Exactly. We were in jail. Jail? Margie, it was awful. We went to a roadhouse to dance, and we didn't know there was gambling upstairs until the state police raided the place. Then they took everybody to jail, whether they were gambling or not. Oh, come on now, honey. It's all right. You didn't do anything wrong. 
I hope you had sense enough not to give your right name. Oh, of course not. I gave yours. Mine? Jeff gave a phony name, but yours was on the car registration. What could I do? Well, I don't know, but I wish you had. Oh, well, what's the difference? Nobody knows about it anyway. Madame Delange knows. I had to call her to arrange bail. Oh, Margie, I'm sorry, honestly. Well, I'm glad the constabulary called Madam instead of my dad. That would have blown a fuse. Then you're not mad. Of course not. After all, that's what I came up here for, to take your place. <laughs> Yoo-hoo! Come on! Come on! Oh, no. Long I want you to get me the offices of Honeywell and Todd in New York City. Good morning, Honeywell and Todd. I'm sorry Mr. Honeywell isn't in at the moment. Yes. I see. It's Madame Delange at the health farm in Connecticut. She seems upset about something. I'll take it. Hello. May I help you? Perhaps you can. It concerns Mr. Honeywell's client, Miss Barron. Her companion, Margie Albright, was involved in a most unpleasant incident last night. To be specific, a gambling raid. G -g gambling raid? No, 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 not Margie. Yes, Margie. I was obliged to authorize her release by the state police at 5 o'clock this morning, along with some dissolute man by the name of John Doe, who was arrested with her. But, Madame Delise, there must be something. Hello? Hello, hello? Oh, what have I done to deserve this? Is Margie in trouble? She's been in and out, and now I'm in. Oh, uh, Betty, not one word to Mr. Honeywell about this. I'm going up there. You find out what time the next Connecticut leaves for the train. Oh, what am I saying? This is all... <laughs> Morning, Betty. Mr. Albright in? Well, yes, but I wouldn't bother him right now. He's in sort of a nervous state, Mr. Wilson. Well, he's always in a nervous state when he sees me. All I want is Margie's address up there at that. When's the next train leave? I, I haven't had time to find out, sir. Just a minute. Morning, Mr. Albright. Hello, oh, Freddy. What are you doing here? I came to get Margie's address. Margie's enough trouble without you sticking your blob of a nose in. Never mind the train. I'll find out the station. Hello? Uh, Mr. Albright, wait. It's for you. It's someone at the health farm. Hello? Hello? Yes, yes, this is Mr. Albright. Mr. Albright, you don't know me, but I was involved in that uh, incident with Margie last night, and I want to take full responsibility. You, so, so you're John Doe, huh? No, sir. My name is Jeffrey Harris, but uh, I'm not calling about that. Although I've only known your daughter a short time, a great deal has happened to bring us together, and I want your permission to marry her. For what? Marry Margie? Yes, sir. Uh, naturally, I'd like to have your consent, sir, but I must inform you that I intend to elope with her tonight, regardless. <laughs> Mr. Albright, wait, what happened? My little Margie, eloping. Let go of me. I've got to stop her. <laughs> that man's a maniac. He nearly killed me. What's going on here? I don't know. He got a phone call. Something about Margie eloping. Eloping? <laughs> Where is that help for him, anyway? Uh, Three Oaks, Connecticut. <gasps> Somebody please tell me what's going on here. Well, Mr. Honeywell, I... I... It's something about Margie getting arrested and getting married. Margie, never mind the rest. Get me those Baron Trust Fund papers and find out when I can get a train. When I get up to that health farm, there's going to be all right strewn all over the place. <laughs> either. Never before have so many empty stomachs run so far on so little. <laughs> hey, what's the matter with you? I don't know where to begin. Jeff asked me to elope with him tonight. Oh, wonderful. That's what we came for, isn't it? Yes, but he called up your father to ask his permission. Well, that was a sweet, thoughtful thing to you. <laughs> and he's on his way up here right now. Margie, what are we going to do? Oh, it may seem fantastic, considering the way we normally operate, but we can tell the truth. Oh, oh, no, we can't. I mean, not to Jeff. 
Oh, don't you see? He wouldn't understand. He'd think I'd just been stringing him along. Margie, I've got to have a little time just so I can break it to him gently. And that means keeping your father away from here. Hey, wait. I think I've got it. Holda, the big Swedish masseuse. Holda? Can she keep your father away from here? Well, with the aid of a small lie and a big bribe. <laughs> then my pop meet up with Hulda, he think he want to go home. <laughs> I want to see Margie Albright at once. What's your name? Vern Albright. So, you the lunatic fella being pestering poor Miss Margie. Go away before I harm you. What are you talking about? I'm her father. Father, hey, you scream all. <laughs> All I did was mention my name, and wham, she tossed me right into the air. She can't do that to you. You wait here. I'll get us in. <laughs> now, see here, lady. Mr. Albright and I are here to see Margie, and nobody's going to stop us. Forbidden only. No men screwballs allowed. <laughs> you, you sure this isn't a training camp for lady wrestlers? Well, I'm going to get the police. Wait a minute, Mr. Albright. We haven't got time. We're way out here in the country. By the time we get the cops, Margie will already have eloped. Hey, you're right, Freddy, but we'll get in there somehow. You go that way, and I'll go this, and whoever gets in there first, find Margie. Oh. Who are you? Uh, my name is Albright. I want to find my daughter before she eloped with some yokel by the name of Jeff Harris. So will you please... Uh, uh, you wouldn't be... So what am I about to do? Forgive me, Pop. <laughs> Mr. Albright. Mr. Albright. You with Mr. Albright? Yes, sir. Where is he? Where you're going to be. Out. <laughs> isn't my day. Do you know who that was to hit you? The heavyweight champion? That's the fellow who's going to elope with Margie. It is? Well, I'll teach that guy a lesson he'll never forget. Come on. After you, Mr. Albright. <laughs> Look, that's the babe that threw us out the front door. Let's get out of here. You got a cold or something? You better take a good steam bath. Then you go, Harry. out about an elopement. Well, congratulations, dearie. Who's the lucky man? Never mind the cracks. Your father's here, too. And we're not gonna let you get away with it. Dad here? Well, where is he, Freddy? Well, I'm not sure. He ducked into some room trying to get away from that big Swedish babe who threw us out. I had to disguise myself. <laughs> Say, why am I explaining to you? You better explain to me. Who's this dope you're trying to marry? I've got to find Dad. Look, Freddy, you'll just have to trust me. I give you my word, I'm not eloping with anybody. You really mean it? Cross your heart? Well, then what's this all about? I mean, what's this all about? This is a new girl. She's going to join our happy little group, aren't you, Frederica? She's going to take my place. I have something I must attend to. Come along, dearie. Well, keep your chin up, Frederica, and your voice, too. Yeah, what you want? I want to 
Archie Margie Albright. I never screwball that. <laughs> Whom do you wish to see? I play it safe this time and say Doris Barron. Why, of course. You're Mr. Honeywell. I remember your voice on the phone when you made the arrangements. I'm Madame Delange. Uh, how do you do? Now may I see Miss Barron? Oh, yes. I'll show you to her room. There's Miss Barron's room, 4A. After you've talked with her, I want a word with you about that Albright girl. I want a word with her myself. <laughs> Dad? Dad? Margie! Mr. Honeywell. All right. What the blazes are you doing in here? Getting up ahead of steam, sir. You may sure there's a man in there. Now, wound up fixing good this time. You bet, Joe. Quick. Grab a sheet and get in here if you value your life. <laughs> I'm sure I saw a man go in there, Holda. Give him a good working over. Girls, anybody see a man around here? Okay, it's time for your massage. Yeah, you first. Uh, you first, Geraldine. I need more steam. More steam, huh? Come on, Gilly. you better save some of that till after the ceremony? There's a lot more where that came from, Margie. Margie? Then Doris told you. And he was a lamb. He's gonna marry me even though I am stinking rich. <laughs> well, I'll bet that's the first time anybody ever played Cupid in a sweatshirt. Oh, I'll make it up to you, Margie. And to your dad, too, for all the trouble I've caused him. Dad? Hey, that reminds me. I wonder where Dad is. Help! Margie! Help! 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 Calm down, Mr. Honeywell. Have a cup of tea. Drink it while it's still steaming. Take it away. I don't ever want to see steam again. And wait till I see my tailor. He told me this suit wouldn't shrink. I know I put you all to an awful lot of trouble, but if you're not too weary to talk business, perhaps we can settle this matter of my trust fund right now. Well, that's much better. I guess all the principals are present and accounted for. Yes, everyone's here. Say, where's Freddy? Where's Freddy? Yeah, where is Freddy? <laughs> I guess we showed old Honeywell who has the bright ideas in the firm, didn't we? We? Why, sure. Who landed the Baron account as his own personal charge? And who made Mr. Honeywell admit that you can be a help instead of a nuisance? Who? Yes, Dad. Who? Well, <laughs> that's my little Margie. <laughs> 